Hey, what is up, guys? It is the Cutch22 here, bringing you another episode of my MLB 13, the show Pittsburgh Pirates Franchise. Now, usually, as I said in my last video, I'm going to be recording all three games of the series, but due to a computer failure, my last computer had a motherboard and hard drive failure. I actually lost the video for the first game of this series, and I apologize for that. My new computer has a lot more hard drive space and is now warranty protected, so I should be all good in case something like that were to happen again. But um, let's take a look at the box score for this first game, and it was a shutout. Ian Kennedy shut us down. Allowed five hits, struck out six, and a dominating performance to move our shutout inning streak to ten. We have not scored in ten innings. Headed to the second game of this series, and the Red Hot Diamondbacks looking to keep it up. And looking to extend their winning streak to three in a row with a win today. And they have a pretty good shot with their number two starter, Wade Miley on the mound. Miley was a really great surprise last year. As a rookie, person, I think he should have won Rookie of the Year, but he's got a pretty easy lineup to face, and our lineup has been pretty lame to start the season. Besides Alvarez and Sanchez, even McCutcheon hasn't hit well. But um, Miley had a pretty solid first start. Had some trouble with walks there, as you can see, he had three walks and only four strikeouts. Not known as a strikeout guy, but he's more of a command control person. And if he's walking batters, it's not a great sign, but he's going to get off to a good start here in the top of the first. Strikes out McCutcheon, and that'll set up James McDonald to face a pretty potent Diamondbacks lineup that features pretty strong hitters all the way from 3 through 7. I mean, when Paul Goldschmidt's your hitting in the 7-hole, you know you have a pretty good lineup. Even Wade Miley's got a couple of hits. And we were looking to see the first half 2012 James McDonald this game through really solid as opposed to the 2012 second half James McDonald did not pitch so well and uh, James McDonald started off good got a 1-2-3 first and then Wade Miley right back at it as he strikes out Gabby Sanchez in the top of the second on a questionable call looked a little outside to me but uh didn't look outside to home plate umpire and Wade Miley is gonna get another we're gonna get another look at that looks in looks inside there but I don't really know about it I mean Show track seems to be a little bit off. I don't really know. So bottom second now, Jason Kubel hits one high and deep to right field. Snyder going back, but it is off the wall. He's not going to get it. He's going to throw it in, but Kubel's got some wheels. He's wheeling into third. Throw is just a couple seconds late and a little off. Would have had to slide to tag him, so Kubel's in there. Next batter's Eric Chavez. Next pitch, in fact. Hits one high and deep to just about the same part of the ballpark. Snyder makes the catch, but no chance. That's a really long throw. Snyder's got an arm, but nobody's going to get him from out there. So it's one knocking Diamondbacks on the Eric Chavez sack fly. Next batter, Aaron Hill. 2-2 two -two count, gets a slider. And, ugh, that one's ruled inside. I don't really know about that one, but uh, Hill's going to take advantage of it. A few pitches later. J-Mac going with the fastball on the full count. Hill, going to drive that one high and deep to right center field out near the pool, and that one is going to go. Aaron Hill with his second home run of the year, and Aaron Hill has really revived his career since coming to the Diamondbacks in 2011 trade deadline. He got the funky King of the Hill headline there. He's had a great year, won a silver slugger, and had two cycles last year. I had the pleasure to actually see one of those cycles in person, so he's really turned into the player everyone thought he would be coming out of LSU in 2003. So top four, Miley's retired the first four, nine batters he's faced, sorry, Starling Marte. Got some contact on his swing, hits it high and deep to left, and that's going to get off the wall. Kubel, not going to get it into second, and it's going to be a double for the first hit of the game for the Bucks. Bottom four now, two men on, one out. Aaron Hill up again, and he's going to pop it up. Infield fly rule will be called, but Parmas will make the catch anyway. So Hill squanders an opportunity there, and now Paul Goldschmidt's up, and it's a 3-0 count, and he's got the green light, and Alvarez botches one on the third baseline. And that was tough, and throw was a little offline, so Goldschmidt with the RBI single. But honestly, I think that should have been ruled an error on Alvarez, but regardless, it's 2-0 Diamondbacks and Goldschmidt. Take another look at that. Picks up his teammate Aaron Hill after he... Squandered opportunity with two outs on 3-0. He's swinging, and he's getting hits. So top six now, Wade Miley is just dealing. 
gets James McDonald looking on a fastball high and away. And then Andrew McCutcheon fans at a fastball. Swings a little bit over it. Miley's fanning him down. So after six, that'd be it for James McDonald. Chris LaRue coming in, and LaRue's been really solid this year and last year, too. I'm, I'm really excited for what the bullpen has in store this season. The Pirates front office has done a really great job of acquiring some solid bullpen arms. Jason Grilly has been really good. Mark Melanson, who came over in the Joel Hanrahan trade, has been really good, and they did a good job getting rid of Hanrahan in time. His control was kind of worrying, so I'm excited to work with the bullpen this year. And Neil Walker will get the ball over to first as Rue gets Aaron Hill to ground out there. So now we go to the top of the ninth. Two outs, 0-1 count to Pedro Alvarez. And Alvarez is going to ground one of first. Goldschmidt's going to take it to the bag, and the scoreless streak moves to 19 innings as Wade Miley throws the complete game shutout, dominating us. And I have to admit, it was not one of my better performances in MLB 13, the show. Uh, it was actually one of my worst performances, but, you know, that's just baseball. Anything can happen, and so the Diamondbacks have take the first two of the series and extend their winning streak to three games, and Clint Hurdle is definitely not impressed, and uh, why, why would you be? I mean, James McDonald pitched really well. The bullpen pitched really well, shut out from the bullpen, but it wasn't enough. So heading into game three, looking to break some momentum on the red-hot Diamondbacks on the road. And the starters for this game would be two left-handers with opposite tails. The youngster Patrick Corbin against the journeyman Jonathan Sanchez, who's fighting for a spot in the rotation still. And top of the first, Neil Walker's going to single into right for the first hit of the ball game. Walker, off to a slow start, but he had quite a game in this game, actually. And Sanchez pitched pretty well in his first start of the season, but he'd like to see better from that, and he's fighting in case... He wants to keep his spot once Francisco Liriano comes back from the DL. Top second now, 1-0 count to Travis Snyder, and he's going to hit that one into the gap. And he's going to wheel around and make it to second. Thought about going for third, but decided not to. Quite an arm out there in center field, so just wanted to hold up there. And uh, next batter is Russell Martin. First pitch he sees. Into left field. Parra's going to dive, and he won't get that one. He'll advise dive there. Snyder scores, Martin with the RBI double, and both Snyder and Martin are starting to heat up after sub-200 starts to start the year, so starts off good there, and Martin, just take another look at that, he's just got such a sweet swing. So, bottom second now, 1-1 one, one count to Paul Goldschmidt, and Goldschmidt gets a pitch he likes, a two-seamer, and hits it high and deep, and that one's way out of here, a moonshot to straightaway center. You know, Goldschmidt's got some power, quite a steal for a ninth round selection. Everybody knows how well he hits off the San Francisco Giants, but he hits pretty well off of the Pittsburgh Pirates right here. Jonathan Sanchez giving up the home run, his first home run allowed of the season. It's Goldschmidt's second homer of the campaign, and it is tied up again 1-1. So, head to the top of the third. First pitch of the inning, Starling Marte. Slaps it right up the middle and off the chest of Patrick Corbin. Willie Bloomquist is going to throw it to first. It's not going to be in time, but the more concerning issue is Patrick Corbin on the mound there. Took a fast one right back to the chest, but Corbin's a pretty tough guy. I've met him before, and he seemed like a pretty tough guy, so he's going to stay in the game. And uh, he's going to face Andrew McCutcheon next after getting Neil Walker out. And McCutcheon slaps it down the line on a pitch a little inside, and... Para makes an ill-advised stop at the wall there, but it doesn't really matter. Marte still will come around to score. McCutcheon in there with the RBI double, his first of the year. The next batter's Pedro Alvarez. 0-1 count. Slaps one down the first baseline. That one's going to be fair. Gets past Goldschmidt. And McCutcheon's going to wheel around and score. And it's 3-1 bucks on the Alvarez RBI single. Next batter, Gabby Sanchez. Takes a curveball, hits it right up the middle, and Corbin's in some trouble now. One out, men on first and second. And it's going to be Clint Barmas at the plate. One out count. Barmas takes a hanging slider, high and deep to left. Clears the left field fence for Barmas's second home run of the year. And now the decision to keep Corbin in is looking kind of 
ill-advised on Arizona's part, because he's now allowed five runs to this inning. Barmas with his second home run of the year. And while Barmas isn't much of a hitter for contact, he has some great defensive value and chips in at clutched moments. I notice he's a very clutch hitter, even though that's not really a definitive value. Next batter, Travis Snyder. 2-2 two -two count, hits one up the middle, and now he's got a single and a double. Now keep that in mind as we head later into this one. Next batter, Russell Martin. Remember, he doubled home uh, Snyder earlier. That one's going to be high and deep, and for a second I thought that was going to get caught, but nope, that's going to clear the wall at the 376 sign. So Martin hits one out, and Corbin's now allowed seven runs this inning, eight runs in total. And he's starting to look a little tired out there. As Martin comes around, the base is on his second home run of the year. Martin, also a guy not known for his average, but with the Yankees, hits a lot of home runs, provides some great defensive value. Those are the types of guys Pirates like to go for. That'll be the end of it for Patrick Corbin. Pitched a pretty tough game. Two and a third innings allowed eight earned runs. So maybe that bump off the chest did hit him. And in comes the former starter, Trevor Cahill, who in the game has been placed in the bullpen due to a very large depth of starting pitching for the Diamondbacks. And Cahill is going to get another out, but he's going to face Neil Walker here. And Walker is going to hit it high and deep to right field. And that one... He's going to clear the wall, so a nine-run inning so far. And Walker will bring home the pitcher, Jonathan Sanchez, who singled off of Cahill. So Walker, starting to heat up after a pretty slow first two series of the year. In the pitcher's park here, uh, hitter's park, sorry, here in the desert. He's starting to heat up. Bottom three now, man on second. Martin Prado singles up the middle on an 0-2 count. And he'll bring home the runner, Bloomquist. Throws a little off in timing. And Prado adds it up, and now it's a 10-2 game. Top five now, two men on, one man out. Andrew McCutcheon lines it down the line in third base. Eric Chavez not going to come up with it, but the throw to the plate will get him. Marte's out. This reminds us a little bit of the play from game two of the series, where Alvarez botched it, but instead, no run scores here. So now top six, one out count, two outs, Travis Snyder. Remember I said he had a single and a double. Cody Ross going to make a sort of diving, tumbling somersault there. He's not going to get it. And, you know, I figured, let's just go. I risked it with him earlier, decided not to here. And I did risk it with him here. Triples. Now he just needs a home run for the cycle. Now bottom six, three, two count. Miguel Montero singles into right. And the Diamondbacks have a base runner on here. Next batter, Jason Kubel. He's going to hit one into the gap. McCutcheon going to chase after it, but nobody's going to get him at the plate. So Montero brings home a run, and it is 11-3, Pirates. Next batter, Paul Goldschmidt. That one's going to go. Decided not to dive with Marte, didn't want to risk it or have a big lead. So Goldschmidt, he's got some speed, gets in second easily. Brings home Montero. It's now 11-4. Next batter. Bringing him home, but no, he's going to hold up there. So, Goldschmidt's going to go around third, but decide to hold up. Snyder's got quite the arm, and that's it for Jonathan Sanchez. Clint Hurdle makes the signal for the pen, and it's going to be Jenmar Gomez with two men on. Uh, three men on, actually, after an Aaron Hill walk. So, Gerardo Parra decides to single down the line. Two runs are going to score, and Sanchez is charged with both runs as Martin dives there. So now runners on the corners, and Eric Chavez going to hit Gomez's nasty sinker into a 4-6-3 double play, and the inning's over. Top seven now. 11-6 is the score, and Andrew McCutcheon high and deep to right field for a solo home run. And there's the McCutcheon we've all been waiting for all season. Starts off slow, but man, as he started to get back into the groove of it. It's going to hear some MVP chants when we head back home for our next few series. That's off Tony Sip. On deck circle, Eric Jason awesome. Grilly will come so, on here. So, not in a safe situation, a situation, but I decided situation, to bring in Jason Grilly here. Because he hasn't pitched in a few days to get some work. And the first battery faces, Eric Hinsky strikes him out on a change up there. Now, after a walk to Martin Prado, the next batter is Willie Bloomquist, who also fans on a change up. And then it's Miguel Montero. 
who fans looking on a beautiful curveball, so really strikes out three batters, walks one, and Jonathan Sanchez, despite a rough start with six earned runs, gets the win after going five and a third innings, and we pick up a win to end the series and snap the three-game losing streak of the Arizona Diamondbacks. So I want to thank you guys all for watching. I really do appreciate every view. So be sure to subscribe, uh, leave a comment below, and give this video a like. Be sure to check back soon for my next episode, which will feature our series coming back home against the rival Cincinnati Reds. So again, thanks all for watching, and have a nice one. This is The Clutch 22, signing out.